you can feel the pendulum swinging right across this country. Uh, people are talking about the Kimberley Coast and the gas up in Melbourne, in Hobart, uh, in Sydney. I've been showing since I was here with Sea Shepherd last time that three minute film, the short they have, at business conferences all over the country. And it just leaves people gasping. And uh, you can tell in the wake of that, they want to come here. And one of the uh, problems, of course, is that coming down the line is going to be the management of all the people who want to come to the Kimberley. We share that problem in Tasmania. And when the Franklin Dam was being mooted to wreck the, great, the last great wild river in southern Australia, uh, I said to one of the conservationists, well, uh, yes, um, if we keep this, tourism may have an impact on it. And he said straight back to me, it's better, we love it to death than we hate it to death. And I thought, uh, I've carried that with me ever since. Well, it hasn't been hated or loved to death. Uh, it's become now, marked down, just last year, by one of the um, most considered outdoor magazines on earth in, in New York as the greatest White River ex um, rafting experience anywhere on the planet. And that's something we nearly lost just 30 years ago, except people right across the country cared about it. They came at the end and stood in their thousands in the rainforest and stopped the bulldozers. But I want to tell you what was happening just 18 months before that. I stood for election in Tasmania. We had candidates for the Franklin standing in all electorates in Tasmania. And we all lost. It was a total rout for us as uh, then pre-green candidates for Tasmania and Robin Gray, who said nothing, he mentioned the Franklin Dam once during that campaign, stormed to power, saying, I have a mandate for this dam. But he didn't. And people thought differently about it. He sent the bulldozers in just two months later into the Franklin Valley. But people rallied from all around the country and 18 months later, the dam was stopped and compensation money flowed, uh, but uh, it went mostly outside the west coast. But let's look at the west coast today of Tasmania. It would have been a backwater with that dam. And you have to ask who is going to come to see a gas factory? There'll be somebody along the line who'll say it'll be a tourist attraction. Uh, but let me uh, tell you, it'll be nothing... Well, Lake Pedder is the greatest example, one of the most beautiful lakes on the planet, flooded before the Franklin, the National Park, big road put in there, big display houses, uh, glass and steel structures to look at the dam, and it's the one major road in Tasmania where tourism is now below levels in 1970s. <laughs> Nobody wants to see an artificial structure like that. Because the fastest growing thing in the world, as far as tourism and hospitality is concerned, as far as people wanting to get back to do what Anne was so eloquently talking about, experience that other dimension between us and the earth, is remote, natural, and eco-educational and cultural tourism. It's growing faster than all the other tourism attractions, shopping, um, rides, fun fairs, uh, the whole works. Getting close to nature on its own term is the biggest attractant on the planet for tourism. It's one of the reasons, I think, why uh, big ship tourism is so much back in vogue, because people want to get close to the ocean. The Orion going down to Antarctica and back now, um, you, can't, you can't get a ticket on it. People are so keen to have a look at wildlife and wild country on its own terms. Never was a case of locking places up. We're way beyond that on this planet. It's a case of keeping places for ourselves and for that intergenerational equity coming down the line. And so on the west coast of Tasmania now, which would have been a backwater, there's prosperity coming out of the Wild Rivers National Park. The cruise boats take 120,000 people a year over Macquarie Harbour, where we uh, came back um, to go to jail just 30 years ago, uh, to visit the ancient hewn pine trees, the rainforest, 
the magnificent reflections on the dark water of the Gordon River, the falling leatherwood blossoms, the platypuses. This, this is a magic realm and people go away saying it's an experience I've never had before in my life. I'll never forget it. Then how wonderful the Kimberley. In 1998-99, Partner Paul and I were invited up by the Bonobo people to float down the magnificent Kimberley through those uh, stunning gorges. And we did that. And I'll never forget that. And the, the thing, besides the water being warm, you know, you get into it at midnight off the hot rocks and little things started nipping you in the water. I don't know what they were. But um, very different to the Franklin, I can tell you. Uh, but we were there with people from country and we were seeing that relationship with country going back uh, beyond my imagination. And it was a stunning experience. And it's one that in the future will open up again, if the Buddha people uh, wish it. And it's one that's going to give people from elsewhere around the world that experience that Jeff Cousins got when he went to Africa. And people will pay any price to have it once they hear about it. And I'm fascinated just to hear about the options of Mercedes Cove, of the hill country. I want to go there, I don't know anything about it, but I already want to go there. <laughs> the desert, I saw glimpses of that through the cyclonic clouds coming up today, and I'm, I'm always stunned, stunned by uh, the beauty, the colour, uh, the diversity of that country of ours below us. And we're a bit shy about it. But we're also a bit worried about too many people wanting to come and see it. But it's the best problem in the world to have. The worst thing that can happen is for big corporations which have no relationship with country at all to move in and industrialise a magnificent place like this. There's few left on earth. There's none in China unless you go to the Gobi Desert. There's none in Europe. I repeat that, there is none in Europe. A large natural realm like this one, with uh, a relationship between people and culture, with culture going back into our imaginative past, there's none left in Europe. And this is, the Kimberley is one of the most magnificent cultural and natural places left on the planet. And on Saturday week, there's a choice coming up here because the thin end of the wedge is that gas hub. And if that goes ahead and the port goes ahead, then comes the coal mines, the uranium mine, and so much else. This is not going to come back, this opportunity. And that's why I've um, really not got out of my way. I've just led where my heart wanted me to go to come up here tonight. Uh, to say there is one party opposed to that gas hub. I've been a member of the Greens since Lake Pedder when no other party would stand up for country. And now I'm here on the other side of our magnificent country saying that the vote on this occasion can never be gotten back. And to me there's only one choice. And it's a serious choice. Because the only party that stands against the gas hub is the only party that stands for our grandchildren. The only one. And if we want to vote for our grandchildren, that's where the vote has to go. I'm, uh, I'm very pleased to uh, be, be uh, back here. I will say one other thing, I made this commitment before, if they bring the drills in to the sand dunes after this election, not much being said about it now, I will come back here to stand with all of you. And you can't 
once you have that connection, you can't divorce some piece off and say, well, we've got to give away on that, or I can't make a, a contribution to that. Uh, this is a very, very lucky electorate, electorate, Kimberley. It has a very, very clear choice to make on Saturday week. And there's still seven, eight, nine days to tell other people about that choice. And it's very important that they know about it. Because that choice of no gas hub empowers the people of the Kimberley in their future. The choice of the gas hub disempowers the people of the Kimberley and their future and everything that's going to come after it.